Kels, how you doing? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Are you muted? All right, there we go. There you go, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Can you, uh, let's see. That's you? Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to uh, take that down for now? Um, why are our names switched? <laughs> you said what's that? I'm list you're listed as me and I'm listed as Montrello on here. Oh, wow. That's right. What in the world? I guess because did you set this up? I'm 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 texting them right now. <clears throat> yeah, that's <laughs> I didn't <hate> it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Let's see if I can fix that. Am I am I the only panelist? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. Pardon? Is this going to be us? Okay. Then how many people? Do you have any idea? Is it five? Is it ten? Um, the last time I checked, it was like sixty. No way! <laughs> wow. It's all no. It's we're, we're working on doing something called like lunch break, where we pick like the twelve o'clock hour to come in share some information about a particular industry, uh -huh. keep it brief and make sure we highlight the organization that we partner with, like okay. you guys. So we'll talk about, you no, know, today we're talking about food trucks and then we want to make sure that if anybody has any more questions or want to know more about starting a food truck, you will become a resource. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know? I'm just going to take, you know, five, 10 minutes to talk about the business and then open it up for questions. I, that was kind of my plan because people usually have a bunch of questions. Yeah. Okay. Flip flip through your um your slides and make sure that everything's working correctly. Hold on. Are you seeing them switch? Yep. Okay. That's it. Yeah, that's good. That's 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 30 minutes right there. Yep. <laughs> Uh, and honestly, the most valuable part is, you know, is Q and A because everybody's got the same questions, and you know, once you start kind of asking questions, you kind of get to the meat of it and the heart of it for folks. But I'll cover, you know, as much or as little as necessary, and as time will allow. Now, question: Are you able to? Are you able to? to go into the participants and change your name? Participants, am I able to? Mm -hmm. I got it, I got it. Harrison, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There we go. Now our names are back correct. That was <laughs> yeah, I don't know what that's all about. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm gonna, re I'm recording right now. Um, Last time we did this, we had stopped recording while we kind of got things situated and then mm -hmm. we went to uh, record again. It didn't work. And so we had a whole session and we missed the recording. So, oh, wow. Okay. Like, well, <clears throat> no, that's great. That's great. Um, yeah. So you'll be able to share that with me then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because we'll probably get that posted on our site as well. Okay. Good, good, good. Um, yeah, we had a nice little event last night in uh, Centennial Park. Oh, really? Uh, that's that's what some of those pictures were from from last night. It was the and I'll I'll talk a minute about that, but uh, it was the Skills Challenge USA. Um, it's being held at World Congress Center right now, and last night was just kind of a fun night. It's you know I think high school students from all over the country. And 
so last night was, you know, we had about 15 food trucks right there in Centennial Park around the ring. And there were like 6,000, well, there's 6,000 kids participating in this deal. What kind of skills challenge? What do you mean? You no, know, I, I think it's like leadership, public speaking, things like that. I'd never heard of it, but I, I believe that's that's kind of what it is. Uh, but they had a great turnout. I mean, it was, of course, hot as you know what, but um, yeah, really, really nice turnout and good event and all the food trucks did really well. So, uh, so that was good. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm going to, yeah, bring that up. Talk about that. Cause I'm going to ask you like, all right, so that event happened. You had, you said about 15 food trucks out there. Uh huh. How, do, how, yes. how do people find out about those type of events and how do they become one of the vendors? Were they able just to pull up or was it like a list? No, you can never just pull up. Okay. Um, yeah, you have to be invited. So in this case, we have a relationship with the World Congress Center where they're kind of a vendor of choice. Right, right. So, you know, all the events they do when they need food trucks, they reach out to us and we kind of organize it and make it easy for them. So they've got one point of contact instead of dealing with, you know, right. um, team food trucks. Right. But, you know, yeah, but the great question, ask those kind of questions and yeah. Um, so you're going to go through this and then I'm going to ask questions. And we're yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> Stop me anytime and, and yeah. then we'll, we'll open it up to, to them, the participants at the end. But yeah, please. Uh, and they, there's a, they have a section where they can um, write questions in. Okay. I'll be able to see them. So okay, if they pop up, I'll, you know, I'll address them. Okay, great. Great, great, great. Yeah, we've got um, another big event out there for Fourth. Well, you know about Fourth of July. Mm -hmm. So that's a uh, that'll also be in Centennial Park, and for that one, we'll probably have somewhere between twenty and twenty-five trucks. Wow. Because they're expecting about 20,000 for the 4th of July event. And wow. So that's going to be madness, complete madness. I'm trying to where I, huh? I'm trying to remember like where I was last year, 4th of July. Mm -hmm. No, I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> that's a good thing. <clears throat> we're really i'm really doing this I'm, I'm trying to like i said we're building some content for um kind of what, 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 we're, what we're trying to do is make sure that we're answering questions that we're getting the most of okay and, and it's, it's really I've, I've been working on the um economic development team and I'm, I'm trying to get us to be more proactive okay and and so as people ask questions, then we can kind of pay attention to those questions they're asking and then do a quick workshop that answers it in a, <clears throat> in a larger scale that we can record. Sure. And so not only can I email this out to the people who registered, but I can replay this. And like, hey, next month we're talking about food trucks. We have the Food Truck Association of Georgia covering this is that, and I can just have it on there for people to go click. So if you have a question about food trucks, you can go click this link. Yeah, yeah. Wow, it allows more content for us to. I don't have to explain the same thing to everybody. Watch right. this quick thirty-minute video. And you get an overview of how food trucks work in the city of uh, in, in in Atlanta. And no, I love it. 
and, and you know, and I'm doing that with um, um, a myriad of, of things that we have going on. So when people are calling about small business and want to know about financing or picking a, a business, getting a business bank account, like what bank you should go with for, mm. for you know, lending and loans and things like that, like this have resources that we already communicate with, come on here, speak about that and specifically then provide themselves a resource. And then it, then it kind of, I would say limits the number of phone calls I get, but at least I have outlets. Yeah. 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 No, that's great. Yeah. Anything I can do to help there. Cause the last, the last piece of this is, you know, a P and L and this P and L is it's essential in any business and any opportunity you're considering, you kind of need to begin with the end in mind that says, Hey, right. before I do anything, spend any money, let me project out what I think this is going to do. And then, you know, you're making a more informed decision. So uh, it's just kind of how I think about any business opportunity is got to start with the financials. Uh, yeah. And that's, and I think that's interesting. We might be able to talk on that a little bit. Um, Montrella. Oh, I didn't know mom was going to be on. She popped in. She said, I'm, I'm here for support. <laughs> here, I'm having, um, Zoom is not being friendly with me today. So if you had came in about five minutes ago, there'd been two of you. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, my name was listed as, as Miss Rose as well. And I was like, what in the world? I couldn't oh. even use the link from the phone. It didn't work. So I had to get on my computer. So well, we're glad to have you. <sighs> I'm glad to be here. Now, I don't know if you need my camera on. I'm having difficulties trying to get that on. So no, you don't. Know, I mean, if you can, that'd be good as the administrator, but don't don't worry about it if you can't. I'm not gonna worry about it, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I've had enough of Zoom today. <laughs> All right, so we have about six people in here currently. We'll let them build up. You know, we're gonna start for another two minutes. But, um, There's 60 picks. I'm only showing 10 on my end. No, I said, okay, we got, yeah, 10 people in right now. It's, it was six seconds ago. Oh, oh, six, you said. Oh, yeah. I thought you said 60. <laughs> like 60 people came to see you, Montrella. <laughs> but again, I, I think as we get more. About, I mean, it's jokes today. <laughs> I, 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 I the numbers to go up as we create more consistency and providing these opportunities for business. Yeah business owners to, you know, hear from us and get some resources and, you know, grow their businesses. All right, let's get started. Good afternoon and happy Friday to everybody. My name is Kelsey Maynard. I am the small business advocate here at Invest Atlanta. Um, I'm excited to bring you another one of our, what I'm calling our lunch breaks. We'll be able to come together with one of our business partners um, here in the city and provide our business owners with information about different, um, different business needs. Um, so today, today is National Food Truck Day. If you did not know, National Food Truck Day is very important in, in the city because uh, we love food trucks and we love the opportunities that food trucks bring and the diversity of food that is able to be brought through the city. So today is National Food Truck Day and we didn't think we could do anything better than bring the Food Truck Association of Georgia to partner with Invest in Lands today to talk about food trucks and how to get a food truck, how to set your business up for food trucks and, and be successful. Um, I wanna introduce Mr. Tony Harrison today. 
as well as Montrella Rose, who's on, on, on here as well. And they represent the Food Truck Association of Georgia. I'll let Mr. Tony introduce himself briefly. Hey guys, thanks for having me. Kelsey, can they see my screen? Yes, they can. All right, perfect. Well, uh, happy National Food Truck Day, everyone. And, and thanks for joining. And Kelsey, thank you for, uh, for inviting us out. Um, as Kelsey said, my name is Tony Harrison and I'm president and CEO of the Food Truck Association of Georgia. And uh, I just want to spend a, a few minutes kind of giving you an idea of who we are, what we do, uh, give you a sense for the business, uh, but most importantly, open it up and give you guys an opportunity uh, for those interested to ask questions uh, about our business and, and our industry. Uh, so I know, Kelsey, you're going to kind of moderate, but uh, folks, feel free to chime in whenever you uh, whenever you need. OK, and Montrella is our administrator for the Food Truck Association, and she's also uh, joining us here on the call. OK, so just briefly, uh, the Food Truck Association of Georgia, we essentially exist to make Georgia more food truck friendly. We have about 100 members and uh, we try and focus on cutting red tape, you know, cutting government regulations. Uh, increasing the number of vending opportunities. So we try and find places where our, where our members can go and sell their food. Uh, we also provide a lot of training and education uh, for our members as well. But again, just in general, we exist to, uh, to kind of support the industry. So that's food trucks, food trailers, dessert trucks, and carts as well, okay? Um, so you think about starting a new business and, uh, you know, and what that represents. The reality is most Americans, most adults today think about starting a new business every year. And yeah, I mean, it's, a uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of the people on this uh, Zoom have thought about this. And, and why do we think about that? Well, you know, people have um, ideas of, of freedom, right? They want to be their own boss. They want financial freedom. And, and everything that comes along with that. But there's a side to that, that people don't take that step off the limb. And why do you think that is? What's the biggest obstacle for people starting their own business? Well, I'll tell you, it's fear. Um, for the second year in a row, again, fear is the number one reason why people don't start a new business. And there's a lot of reasons, obviously, that, that people don't, don't take that plunge, but fear is a big part of it. And that fear is warranted. The reality is most new businesses fail within the first five years. Um, and there's a million different reasons for that. Um, but, you know, poor planning, uh, not being properly capitalized for the business, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of reasons, but um, while fear is justified, um, if you do have the right plan and the right passion and the right work ethic, uh, you can be successful in starting your own business. So enough of that for now. Let me just show you. These are actual pictures uh, from an event, a food truck event last night in Centennial Park. Uh, this was the um, skills challenge. It's a national event. It's high school students from all over the country. And uh, this year it was held uh, in Atlanta. It's actually being held at the World Congress Center. So this is Centennial Park right across the street. And we had about 15 uh, food trucks out there and um, it's just a great event, great night. Uh, everybody, all the kids had fun. The food trucks did really well and made good money. Um, so, you know, this is really what it's all about. And, uh, you know, as we celebrate National Food Truck Day, um, you know, on the heels of last night, it was, it was really good. Um, and Kelsey, I don't know, again, if I can hear you when you're chiming in, but again, feel free to stop me at any time and ask any questions, okay? Right. Well, I did have a question because sure. you know, not too many people knew about um, the skills challenge going on at the uh, World Congress Center. Um, and we didn't know that food, food trucks could be there. Like how, how, do, how, do we, how do they find out events like this? That's a great question. Um, so, you know, specifically for this event, 
Food Truck Association of Georgia, we have a relationship with the World Congress Center, which is actually managed. That World Congress Center Authority is managed by a company called Levy. And Levy is the food uh, concessions company. And they, they have most of the big contracts. That, so they have Mercedes-Benz and State Farm and a lot of the big uh, uh, coliseums and stadiums across the country. But um, again, Whenever they need a food truck, whether it's at World Congress Center or Centennial Park, they reach out to us. And uh, of course, I've said we've got Montrell on the phone and she's just an expert at coordinating all of this and finding out what the needs are, identifying the right trucks to be there and working with them on their menus and, um, you know, just kind of, again, coordinating the whole thing. So it makes it easier on the customer. They don't have to worry about dealing with 15, 20 different trucks, they deal with one person and get all their needs met. Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. And, 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 and also, Kelsey, because that's a good question. We have um, software. We have a system called Street Food Finder that we use that helps food trucks book events. And at the same time, it helps the public find out where food trucks are going to be and what their menus are. They can even place orders right there on the uh, app. Uh, so for those of you interested, uh, download Street Food Finder. It's a great app for, uh, for finding, you know, where food trucks are at any given day and time. Okay. And these are just some kind of general pictures of different food truck events. Um, but, you know, for the next few minutes, guys, uh, in terms of expectations, I just want this, you know, this is going to be top line, right? I'm not going, we don't have time to do a deep dive. You're not going to be a food truck expert at the end of this. Uh, but I encourage you to ask questions. And, uh, you know, for those who may be thinking about you know, getting into the business at some point, whether it's next week, next month, or next year, uh, use the Food Truck Association uh, as a resource. We're here to help. Uh, we have, you know, again, members who would love to help and mentor you. Um, so, so reach out to us and our contact information uh, will be at the, the end of this. Um, so just kind of jumping in, there's five key areas I want to touch on. Um, base of operations, equipment, permitting, marketing, and uh, profit and loss statements as it relates to our business. So uh, starting with base of operations uh, and or commissaries, um, to be in the food truck business in Georgia, you are required by the health department to have a base of operation or what we call a food truck commissary. Can that be in my house? Pardon? Can that be like at my house? Um, another great question. I, I will say the, the short answer is yes. The reality is much different. Um, it's very, very difficult to get a home approved as a base of operation. But it has happened, and you know, technically, um, it's allowed. But um, yeah, very, very difficult. What they're looking for is what a commissary does is you're required to return the truck to that base of operation to that commissary every night, and that's where you know all of your supplies, all of your food, everything you have to operate that business is stored in that commissary. Uh, it's where you you know clean your truck, empty your gray water, fill it with fresh water, all of those things um, take place at that commissary and base of operation. And that base of operation is also regularly, uh, per, I mean, inspected by the health department. So um, not to complicate things, but it comes down to traceability. If there's an outbreak on your truck where people are getting sick, they wanna know and they wanna be able to trace where that started, they go to your commissary, find out what supplies, what food you have, where you got it, and, and it just gets down to traceability. So um, base of operations. So the, so the bad news about base of operations is right now in the state of Georgia and specifically in Metro Atlanta, there are way more food trucks than there is commissary space to accommodate them. So in some cases, there's a two year waiting list to get into these commissaries. Uh, everybody's trying to add capacity. The, the biggest is Prep Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they currently have you know, well over hundred trucks in their commissaries, but they are trying to get more space as we speak, uh, as are several other folks. So, um, 
for anybody on the call that's considering this, just keep in mind, um, not to say that, you know, you have to wait two years because there are other ways around this. But the reality is, if you're considering it, it's something you need to be considering now because uh, it is going to take some time to identify space. So not to dig too deep into the other ways around it, but can you give me like one other way around it? If the yeah. commissaries are, are filled, I'm not even sure how to find the commissary. Do I just Google it? Like commissary? Uh, in you, you can do that. If you Google um, food truck commissaries, you know, a, a few will pop up. And of course you can, can reach out to us. But to answer your question, um, you know, two, two kind of relatively simple examples are if you can find a restaurant uh, that has space in a lot of cases because you're to have a commissary you've got to have a grease trap you got to have a three compartment sink you got to have a two compartment veggie sink. so there are things that you have to have all restaurants are going to have those things so there are instances where you can find a restaurant that's got a little extra space and they can you can get them approved as your base of operation. I own food trucks and I own restaurants. One of my restaurants is my base of operation uh, for my food truck. So, and, and then sometimes like convenience stores that serve food, you know, a food truck helps bring in incremental customers in that, that gas station or convenience store. So they too will have a food trap and in some cases have other equipment and supplies where they can be approved as your food truck commissary. So those are just a couple examples of, of potential opportunities to get you permitted without having to wait on one of these traditional commissaries, if that answers your question. Okay, yeah. Guess okay. My, wheel, my wheel's turning a little bit, all right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, kind of switching gears, once you have a base of operation- um, you, and, should, you should find out where you can cook your food and and clean and prep your food first. That's your first thing. Well, yeah, be, because there's a uh, a waiting list, if you will. That's something you know you, you want to start kind of searching for that because you can't you can't go out and start serving until you have that piece uh, uh, covered. That said, you know it also takes time to find a truck or a trailer or a cart, and uh, you know in some cases you're. Um, almost always you're gonna to have to have some built out, build out as a part of that. Um, but, you know, depending on what cuisine, what your menu is gonna look like, you know, you have to determine, do I want a food truck? Do I want a food trailer? You know, am I gonna do a cart? If I'm doing desserts, you know, you, you may only need a little food cart that you can throw a bunch of ice cream or drinks in, something like that. Tony, real quick, we got a lot of questions coming through. Sure. Um, struck a nerve with this commissary thing. Can you, can you do me a favor? Sure. What exactly. Is a commissary. Like, what is that? Yeah, again. So if you had your own standalone commissary, again, by health department code, you are required to have a grease trap, right? Because you can't just pour grease down any drain. So you have to have a grease trap that captures, separates that grease. You're required to have a three compartment sink. So depending on what your cuisine is, you know, they don't want you washing and, and prepping uh, uh, your, your, your lettuce right in the same place that you're doing your seafood or your meat. So right. um, you have to have a three compartment sink for a cleaning and prepping. You have to have a separate hand washing sink as well. Um, you have to have a place for dry storage. Um, and then you, you, know, you have to have some refrigeration. Some people only need a refrigerator, cooler as it's called. Some people need a freezer also. So, you know, it, it's what you, whatever you need for the cuisine and the menu that you're presenting. And, and the health department is going to say, okay, show me your menu. Mm -hmm. And then you have to prove that you can deliver that menu in a, in a healthy, safe, efficient way with the equipment that you have in that commissary. Right. One more question. Sure. Oh, I've got I got like three questions about this restaurant thing. Okay. So is it, are you saying that if I if I want a food truck, I could go to any restaurant and if I could strike up a conversation in a relationship with the owner, I could utilize their kitchen? No. I, I don't have to be, it doesn't have to be like, all right. So last week we had the food truck, we had food truck Fridays at the H E home train station, right? Mm -hmm. We had the grills, one of our food trucks there. Mm -hmm. Um the grill has a restaurant right downtown on North Avenue. So they, of course, their food truck could associate with their restaurant, mm -hmm. but could, 
another restaurant, I mean, another food truck brand be associated with a, a separate restaurant? Um, so the answer is yes and no. It does depend on the county and, the, and that county's health department. Some embrace shared kitchens. And, and so now that's what we're talking about. It's a shared kitchen because in your um, example, it's Negril's kitchen, right? And if a, another truck, say Joe's Barbecue, wants to share that space, so, so they've got to share the space. So it does depend on the county because the county has to approve whether or not they're going to allow you to share the kitchen. Then there's also how that kitchen is separated. In most cases, they are going to want you to have your own designated space, your own designated storage cooler storage, dry storage. In some cases, they want you to put in a new three compartment sink. You can almost always share the, the grease trap because grease traps are very expensive, but depending on the county, they determine you know, how, if they're going to allow you to do that. But it is allowed, but it does vary by county. Okay, so speaking of Fulton County, how is Fulton County with this? Are they for or against it? Um, I would say kind of neutral. It's um, I used to have a shared uh, commissary uh, and I was in Fulton County at that time, um, but it does require it's not as simple as having your own standalone space. You got to, you know, again, it's a more but it's a more detailed process than a traditional one operator commissary. OK, and, I have and, a question. So sure. we want to truck and quit uh, uh, equipment. Mm -hmm. So if I had a mobile bar. Mm -hmm. I think this is a real idea. I have to have a mobile bar. Do the same commissary requirements applied to that because I'm not doing food? Um, the short answer is yes. The long answer is it is complicated because uh, not until COVID did they even allow mobile bars, at least mobile bars to serve the public from a retail standpoint. You could have a mobile bar for catering but if the public is coming up buying drinks individually, that wasn't allowed until COVID. And uh, I think the jury is probably still out on kind of the future for that looks like. But right now you can have, um, you know, serve mobile alcohol, but you know, you, of course all the regular liquor licensing applies to that as well. So I would need to be associated with some type of commissary? Yes, you would still have to have a commissary. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Let's talk about equipment if we can. Yeah, yeah. So again, the equipment piece really depends on, um, you know, several factors. But first and foremost, it's what are you going to serve, right? Are you going to serve um, what we call savory trucks that serve proteins uh, that are going to serve food and uh, versus just um, you know, a dessert truck. Do you have to cook on that truck? Again, most food trucks cook on the trucks, but some do all of the prep in a commissary and then just put it on the truck to kind of, um, you know, package and, and give out to the customer. So there's pros and cons to all of them. Food trucks are by far the most popular, um, the easiest to operate, uh, but they're also generally speaking, more expensive. Um, but they're going to give you more opportunities to vend. A food trailer, again, generally a little less expensive, but you know, you've got to tow it around. It's difficult to get in and out of particularly larger events where there's multiple food trucks. A lot of event coordinators and and or uh, facilities managers, they won't even allow food trailers in some cases. So uh, it really just depends. Um, you know, what you're, you're trying to do and whether you're a dessert or, um, or a traditional savory vendor. Food trucks will cost you on the, on the new high end, um, you're probably looking at 250 to 300,000 for a new high end food truck. On the low end for a used truck, and that's what I would recommend to anybody starting off new is to, is to go used. And you could probably get into a used food truck fully equipped in the $50,000, $60,000 range. So, you know, it's a wide range. And, uh, you know, on the trailer side, you could, you know, again, just depending, but you could probably do it for, you know, twenty dollars to $30,000 uh, 
uh, again, on the U side if you, if you wanted to. Um, so not sure if that, uh, that gives folks a good idea, but um, you know, you can spend as little or as much, and I would encourage folks again to spend as little as possible starting off. Okay. Now, was there another question or you want me to talk about permitting? Health, health inspection and permitting. I, I appreciate that's another hot topic. Yeah, it is. And, and um, I will say up until um, just this year, it's been a it's been the biggest issue uh, for our industry. Georgia has about 150 counties. And um, until this year, you had to have a separate permit and inspection in every single county you did business in. So if you think about Metro Atlanta, we typically think of Metro Atlanta as about 20 to 25 counties. So that means, you know, if you're doing business and rocking and rolling, you need 20, 25 permits. So not only does it cost you a lot of money, but it also requires a lot of time because you have to physically bring your truck somewhere to have that county's health department inspect it and, and you know, do their, their uh, permitting process. So again, just a huge issue. But um, this year, and we've been, the Food Truck Association, we've been working with the, with the state and lobbying to get that changed and effective January of, uh, of 2023 next year. Um, now you're only gonna have to get one permit in the county where your base of operation, where your commissary is, you get that one permit and that gives you the ability to operate anywhere in the state. Now they, anywhere, any county can still in, inspect you but you only have to get that one permit. And now they, they'll be able to see that, hey, you were inspected three months ago. So, you know, you're a good operator in good standing. We don't need to inspect you again um, because, um, you know, generally speaking, you really only have to have one or two inspections, health inspections a year on that truck. So again, that's gonna be a big, big change, but. Um, so let know. me get this straight. Did you say sure. that? So who does y'all work with to lobby to get that that um, that change? Is that something that y'all do as well as the Food Truck Association? Yeah, yeah, we we um, we Matt, we've spent countless hours, uh, you know, down at the Capitol working with several different um, state legislators, and we also partnered with uh, Amer uh, Americans for Prosperity. They're a PAC. Uh, and they they help helped us uh, kind of craft some of the legislation. We we there's a um, a law firm that works with Americans for Prosperity uh, and their legal team, again, in conjunction with the, uh, the PAC and, and, and our board, crafted the language. And then we worked with the Georgia Department of Public Health, um, you know, and got kind of all the, all the right people in a room and right. finally got uh, the language right and um, um, got it passed in, in both the, uh, the House and the the Senate and did not have one single nay, not one single objection. It was very popular, and because um, because again, food trucks are popular, and right. you know, it was easy to get support after years of getting knocked down. We appreciate you for that. Yeah. So, so you already you mentioned Street Food Finder. Is that dot mm -hmm. dot org? What is that? Yeah, it's an app. Um, app. You, know, you can go to Street. You, you can go to streetfoodfinder.com too, but yeah, you, it's an app you can download and, uh, and then that allows, that allows the regular people to see where food trucks will be. That's right. You can them. pick, you can pick your favorites and you can geofence and get alerts if they're going to be in the area. Again, you can place orders. Um, you know, it's a, it's a good tool. Um, what about, what, so I, you see you have uh, social media marketing on here as well. Is that, <laughs> is that the biggest right now? Yeah, so you know, clearly in our industry, um, you know, the reality is people eat with their eyes, right? So if you've got you know pictures and video, you know that's the best way to reach people. And social media is the you know most popular and least expensive way to make that happen. So um, you know, Instagram really drives our industry, but you know you still need a presence on you know Facebook, even Twitter, and um, you know, of course, TikTok is big now as well, but um, Instagram is is kind of the the hot spot right now for for us. Okay. 
so that that requires you to have you know attractive menu pictures um you know again links to where you're going to be calendar right. all that good stuff right tony so i don't want to skip this last part this truck profit and loss but mm -hmm. i got a couple of questions about how sure. to get in contact with you is your next slide contact information yes it does have my contact information on it let's tap to it so everybody can see it while we answer this talk about profit and loss okay um yeah so well, let show, me, show them your, your contact information so we can get okay, that down. sure here we go so guys this is my cell my uh, email uh this is the food truck association website um i answer my phone you call me i answer my phone if i can't answer it i will get back to you um, usually same day and and certainly by next day um, so if if you know we can help uh, reach out let us know again we've got other resources on our team we've got a board of directors and a lot of great members who would love to answer questions and, and help you uh, uh think through this business absolutely and i will i do say this guys this um presentation has been recorded and will it is being recorded now. So afterwards, you will get an email with a link to this recording as well as a link to the slides so that you can review for yourself. Um, and again, Mr. Tony Harrison is available via email and phone, and you can go to the website to learn more. But before we get away, I do want to talk about this profit and loss, though. So that's a big one. Yeah, you know, guys, regardless of what the business is, whether it's, you know, landscaping, food trucks, buying a bank, you got to begin with the end in mind. So you've got to have a plan. So you want some projections to, to think about before you spend any money, before you, you get too deep, you want to understand kind of that business and that opportunity. So this is just a kind of generic standard PL, profit and loss statement. And all it says is, based on my research this is what i think i can do in sales you know on a monthly or yearly basis i'm going to do 25,000 a month in sales and out of that 20,000 dollars a month that i'm bringing in this is what's coming out these are the expenses that are going to come out of that and so for food truck if you're doing 25 and this is just an example there's trucks that are doing 10 times this and there's trucks that are doing less than this but you know, out of those sales, these are the costs. You got to buy the food that you're going to sell. You got to have, you know, pay for labor. If you bought a truck, you may have a payment on it. So you got debt service, that commissary I mentioned, that's not free. You got to pay for that. You know, gas, taxes, insurance, propane, all of these expenses come into play. And so the question you have to answer is you got 25,000 in sales. In this instance, 19,000 in expenses, that leaves you about $5,600 a month to put in your pocket. And so just using this as an example, and we can provide you know, sample spreadsheets that you can fill in your own information, but make sure that this is something that you think you can do and make money at before you go too far down the path. So that, that's all I wanted to share about that, Kelsey, but um you know it's critical right absolutely absolutely so mr harrison i appreciate you so much for taking the time to speak with us because these these conversations are are necessary because I'm, I'm telling you i get so many phone calls about food trucks and starting a food truck and growing food trucks and um just being able to have you as a resource that we can reach out to and that people can have access to 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 find out how to to get around how, how do i get my my permits where do i go how do i get more venues, all that, all those conversations are things that I speak to people on a daily basis about. So I'm really, I'm really appreciative of you being here today. Absolutely. Um, I appreciate you having me. Wonderful. And I, again, guys, I told you at the very beginning that Investland will be having more webinars like this every month. Um, you can check us between 12 o'clock. We'll do this lunch break. We'll talk about 30 minutes of, and we'll dig in deep into some, some particular areas like finance and things of that nature. Um, so I appreciate you guys being here. If you want to reach me directly, my email address is K-M-A-Y-N-O-R at investatlanta.com. That's K Maynor at investatlanta.com. You can email me as well. We can have a conversation about your business and I'll make sure I can connect you with whoever you need to be connected with to grow your business. So again, guys, it's 1230. I appreciate your time here. Um, and look out for an email. So you'll get the updates about um, some of our upcoming events, as well as you'll get, uh, again, the recording and slides from this pre presentation. So you have a great day. Happy Friday. Have a safe weekend. 
I appreciate you guys so much. See you soon. Thank you. Harrison.